Whatever your research is on, once the results are in, you're going to need to write it up in order to share your findings with others, whether that's an examiner assessing your dissertation project or other psychologists considering your work for publication. So in this video, we're going to go through the structure of an academic research report. Now, the chances are, if you're getting ready to write a report, you've already read a fair few. So hopefully this video will help cement the structure for you and get you on that path to a perfect write-up. Let's start at the top with your title. Whilst it's the shortest element of your report, getting the title right is critical to encouraging readers to read your work. It needs to attract attention and interest, but it can't be misleading. Nobody likes clickbait. Pinning down a great title is especially important if you're submitting your work to a journal, as many people now search for articles on digitized databases, which draw keywords from your title and your abstract, which is the next item your reader will come across. Your abstract is roughly a hundred words summarizing your paper. Even though it's very short, you'll want to include your major hypothesis, a summary of your method, a brief outline of your main results and conclusions drawn from those results. All that in one paragraph. In some ways, the abstract is the hardest part to write. So much to fit into a small space, plus the added pressure that readers are going to make that decision of whether to read on or move on based on this solitary paragraph. But again, no clickbait. Only include the things in the abstract that a reader will actually find in your main text. So for this reason, what you'll find is a lot of people leave the writing of the abstract to the end, that it can very tightly represent the paper as a whole. The main body of the text is divided into four parts, introduction, method, results, and discussion. Of these, the introduction is the only one that you don't need to use a subtitle for, as it should be pretty obvious, and it comes immediately after the abstract. Your task in this section is to get your reader up to speed on your area of research. So try and answer these questions as you go. What research has already been conducted in this area before you landed on the scene? What does your research add to knowledge in the field? Why is your contribution important or interesting? And how did you come to deliver this new contribution? How did you do it? A key thing to keep in mind is who is your reader? What level of knowledge do they already have? And what information included at this point will entice them to read further? After all, at this point, you've just handed them a juicy load of alternative papers to go and check out, and they already have an idea of your results and conclusions from your abstract. Those who do read on will want to know everything about your method. Maybe they're looking to critique your approach, or perhaps they want to replicate the study. It's important to give all of the information required to replicate your study accurately. And whilst too much information can make for a dull read, if you're not sure of whether to include something, it's usually better to err on the side of caution and add it in just in case. Subdividing your method section can really help to add structure and avoid accidental omissions. Subsections I'm sure you've seen in journal articles include materials, apparatus, participants, design and procedure. Remember, when it comes to your method write-up, more is more. And then comes the dry part. You're going to need to share your data in the results section so that readers can analyze it independent from your own conclusions. In this section, remember to include both your descriptive statistics and any inferential statistics to show your reader how likely your results are due to chance. And even though this section can make for harder reading, it's still important to include all relevant results. You can then indicate a hierarchy of findings by presenting your results in order of interest or relevance. The final element of the text, your discussion, should include an explanation of how well your data fits the original hypothesis, an overview of your conclusions, and a discussion of theoretical and practical implications of your results. If you think further research should be done in the area, say that. But make sure you give an indication of what specific questions ought to be considered, instead of copping out with the generic, further research is required. And after all that, never forget your references. Always best to do these as you go, rather than leaving the reference gathering to the end. Your references are a complete record of all of the other work that you've cited in your paper. 
including the author's names, the year, title, publication, and even page references in many cases. Keep a solid reference file as you go and you'll be so pleased you did when it comes to editing your final report. Never forget. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up to let others know that it's a valuable video to watch on this topic. Maybe even forward it to a friend who'd find it useful too. And if you haven't already, remember to subscribe to Psychology Unlocked and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any of our upcoming videos. There's always more at psychologyunlocked.com and I'll see you in the next video.